Hi, welcome to Devotions for Friday, May 15th, 2020. Uh, let's begin with the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So I think I've explained before, but I uh, just will repeat this. What I'm using during the five weekdays uh, are some of the readings from uh, what we would be, what we will be hearing in the upcoming Sunday. So this becomes an opportunity to he hear them and think about them and talk about them a little bit before Sunday comes. Uh, sometimes I have used the gospel, and um, quite often, as you know, I preach on the gospel, and that's saved for Sunday. But um, the three other readings I've used, the psalm and the other two readings, and divided them a little bit. So that's what's happening here. So this week, our reading is from Acts. We've been hearing from Acts, and now I think, yeah, ever since Easter, and I'm just looking ahead, we will have Acts coming up for Ascension, and then Pentecost, of course. So um, we'll hear about, from Acts a couple more times. A very interesting book in the Bible, a little bit different, really, than all the others. Today's reading is Acts 17, verses 22 to 31. I would encourage you to go back and read or listen to the first, 20, first, first 21 verses. Um, and especially, even if you don't have quite the patience for all that, let me look here. Um, especially starting at verse 16. So I want to just read a little bit. This is Paul in Athens. So this is St. Paul when he's beginning his ministry. Um, he's at chapter 17. He's been doing a bit yet. Um, and Paul is waiting in Athens. And it says, verse 16, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. And so when he went to talk to the Greek people about it, he does not begin by saying, you're terrible. You have all these idols. Listen how he, how he starts, and we'll talk about that a little bit. So the reading, Acts 17, 22 to 31. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Areopagus and said, People of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For I walked around, as I walked around and looked carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very things you worship, and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by human hands, and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything. Rather, he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. From one man he made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their lands. God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from any one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by human design and skill. In the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. That's where it starts. I wasn't sure. I wanted to go on. There is more. So um, not only would I recommend that you read the verses that come before, but the verses that come after as well. There's so many things here I'd like to talk about with you, and I think some of this might slip in the sermon on Sunday, uh, especially a part about um, in him we live and move and have our being. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about that right now. What I want to say is Paul's tactic in this is great. Like I read from verse 16, he gets upset. He's rather angry that um, these people have all these idols. He sees all these idols made of stone and metal and different things. And so he sees what they've done in trying to say, this is our God. Here we go. 
the tissue box just happens to be handy. This is the god of blowing your nose. Okay, I know that's silly. But they made idols to worship, and that idol was to help you with whatever part of life was difficult. Hmm. We do that sometimes too. We just don't make them out of metal and stone and wood and things like that. But what Paul is pointing out is people made those things. How could those things be the God? God made us. We don't make God or gods. And that's what he tries to point out. The people at the Areopagus are, um, are, are very intellectual. They're very focused on talking about God. They're what we would call seekers. They're looking to know more about God. And Paul takes the opportunity to teach them what he knows. And you notice he doesn't bring in Jesus in this little sermon, this message, until the very end. He talks about what God has done. And, and, and he says, you even have, so among all these gods they have, they even had one just to cover their bases, just in case they missed something, one to the unknown God. We wouldn't want to offend a God out there somehow by missing that one. That's the idea. And Paul says, God is not unknown. God is known to you. God has made himself known to you in everything that he has done, especially in bringing Jesus to you, to save you. And then he goes on to tell them about Jesus, and he will have other opportunities as well to talk about Jesus being raised from the dead so that we could have new life. A lot of that was crazy sounding. It can sound crazy sounding to us as well. Um, but the more we look at it and the more we let the Holy Spirit work in our hearts and in our lives, it begins to make some sense. Let's go ahead and pray. We bring our prayers before you, dear Lord, and we thank you for We pray for our concerns for this world and for our nation. We pray for the concerns of the communities in which we live. We lift our faith communities to you in prayer. We pray for our friends and our families, for those dealing with difficulty and those celebrating with joy. Today, we especially pray for John, Nancy, Shannon, Jackie, Jenny S., Kelsey, Diane, Rod and Laura, Greg, the family of Thomas. And we want to pray for homebound members, including Dorothy, Pastor Kraus, Shirley, Ed, Wayne, and Frankie, Betty, and others who we know who are isolated during this time. We bring all this to you in the name of our Lord Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Christ is risen just as he said. Stay home in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Glad to have you with me here today. Um, I want to say something about one of our members at church here at, who does something that she's been doing. So, she does a lot of things all the time, and that's Bev Renbarger. Um, when I talked to her recently, we were talking about the emails that she sends out, and many of you, I'm sure, have gotten emails from her. She has been checking up on people. Um, 
to check on them and I think it's a great outreach for her as well. If you haven't got an email from Bev and you would like to get one, you don't even have to be a member of Gethsemane. I'm sure she'd be happy to include you. You just send me a comment or an email and let me know and I will pass your name and email address on to her. This, she says, is her fourth, rounds of check, fourth round of checking in with people from Gethsemane to see how they're doing. Um, if you appreciate what she does, let us know and um, let her know. Okay? Hope you have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.